as you read on, you see in verse 18 here, even saying these things with difficulty, they restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to him. They couldn't stop the people from acting out on their sin. And this is what we said earlier. The responsibility of somebody else's results is not on you, Christian. Loving them enough to engage them, loving Christ enough to champion the truth, that's our place. But what somebody does with Jesus is up to that somebody, not you and me. And here, sadly, we did not see. We did not see an overwhelming positive response. In fact, we see in verse 19, from the message, we come to the massacre. And again, I show you this difference between fickle and faithful. These people who literally were treating Paul and Barnabas like gods, worshiping them like gods. The next verse. But Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, literally from almost 200 miles away. And the other one is almost 20 miles away. The persecutors pursue. And again, I speak to your expectations. If you will be a proclaimer of the gospel, you will not only be persecuted, you'll be pursued to be persecuted. Think about the ramifications of that. But Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, from almost 200 miles away, and having won over the crowds, the liars come to persecute the lovers. Last week we saw, and then those false teachers stirred up the crowd. Those who were loving the people of God were now hating the people of God. They were being stirred up with things like doubt and discouragement, direct deceit at times. It says here, think about it, Paul and Barnabas being worshipped as gods. Next breath, the haters of God stir up again the crowds and having won over the crowds. Remember verse 5? They wanted to stone them, but they got away. They chased them almost 200 miles. And now they win over the crowd. So they stoned Paul. And they dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. How bad do you want it? I ask you again, why are you here? How bad do you want it? What are you willing to get knocked down for? It will come at a cost. Jesus said, unless you're willing to pick up your cross daily and follow me, you cannot be my disciples. Right? We know from 2 Corinthians 11, Paul tells the story this, this is just one link in the long chain of the persecution of his life. Unwavering. It says the people who were worshiping them were won over by the liars and the haters. And now they stoned him. They didn't just stone him, they dragged him outside the city because they didn't want him to have the decency of a good burial. It didn't just, it wasn't enough to murder them. They wanted to disgrace them. And they left him there supposing he was dead. Now, the question is, are you willing to die for Christ? Here's the thing. If you've already died to yourself in coming to Christ, you won't be afraid to die at the hands of the persecutors. This is what is at stake. This is the question of the commitment. I've entitled the message today, It's Not About You. Because until we get to this place, self-preservation will always take over. Paul's demonstration to us mirrors that of Christ, which mirrors that of the call to every Christian. Are you willing to surrender all?
when Jesus called you, if he did, in fact, he bid you come and die, says Dietrich Bonhoeffer, says Jesus, says Paul, says Galatians 2.20, says the scriptures throughout. Here we see a commitment to Christ that is truly everything. And yet, in my opinion, and I share with you, we're not yet at the pinnacle. Because while Paul literally is thought to be dead, the scripture go on and says in verse 20, after the massacre, we see the missionaries. There's a very, very good chance that the one who would become the protege of Paul was first there and saw what Paul went through. Let me ask you this. How important is your witness? How important is your perseverance in the midst of your persecution? Might there be a Timothy around you right now that you don't realize? As Paul was at the stoning of Stephen, there's a great likelihood that Timothy was at the stoning of Paul. And look at what God did through those two persecutions. And I say to you, because I know many of your lives, I'm pretty confident that you have Timothys around you right now. And how you walk and the witness that you give in the midst of the persecution. I don't want to teach my boys how to get around it. I want to teach my boys how to walk right through it with Jesus. You say, well, there's not a lot of wisdom there. You know, you might, you might go down. And if I go down, I will go up. And I want to show my boys the way. 